Beyond the Couple Farm, Intimate Friendship and the Provisionality of Love in a Female West African Context. Um, this presentation draws on material I generated during my PhD research between 2006 and 2012 in Ghana. And this project focused on the everyday lives and the discursive practices of women who desire women in post-colonial Ghana. I spent most of my time in two urban settings in Accra on the coast, the, uh, which is the capital city, and in a smaller Akan town that I've anonymized. I also did some archival research, but mostly my core data consists of um, ethnographic field notes and of 60 interviews with um, about 40 working class women. And the interviews were held in English in Akan Chui or in Ga, and most of them were jointly conducted with my long-standing friend Josephine Akbenosan, who became my research associate. So friendship was a compelling entry point, precisely because friendship is a bit of a loose term, and because it was the most frequent term that my research respondents themselves deployed in describing their intimate relationships, their same-sex intimacies. Friendship um, is in many places, or well, I should put it the other way around, in many places gay marriage has become a powerful tool to claim that same-sex relationships are more than just friendships. In Ghana, however, in order to locate women who love women in the first place, the conceptual boundaries between friendship and sexuality needed to be challenged. And in many ways, the, the research gap that exists on female same-sex desire in West Africa results from a discursive emphasis on sexuality as a domain seemingly separate from kinship and from friendship. I'm in a, in a, in a queer space <laughs> in this, this project because it is, a, it is a book project that started off as, uh, as a huge nine chapter tome that was going to be everything black and everything queer and explain everything to you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, as I sat down to actually uh, think about what I had collected over three continents and eight different countries and three and a half years, it be what became most clear was that I had not even uh, scratched the surface. And so what I ended up producing, which is almost done, is this work, uh, Black Queer, Here and There, Ethnography of an Idea. And in this project, I'm trying to think through the idea of Black Queer um, and think about uh, each constituent that is Black and queer and also the ways that they come together or, they, or the ways that they do not come together and the ways, and I think that, uh, that some of what, what Serena uh, talked about points to that is the ways that as researchers and as friends and as humanitarians and people who are, who are on uh, Facebook or, uh, or Urkut or, or something having sex with someone else in another country through our, um, or your uh, uh, t uh, computer screens, um, that we also bring our own ideas of what those constituents are and we, we create them together. Well, yeah, I'm a bit overwhelmed. <laughs> There's a lot of questions I still have, also just understanding um, some of your terminology and so on. But I, I liked the fact that you spoke about Nairobi and about another African context, class context. I was speaking about working class women's or working poor women's um, world. And I like that um, that opened the space because as you said, the difficulty of talking about um, others without being nostalgic or romanticizing or that's something I constantly struggle with. Although I think I try to speak about uh, the, the problematic side and the abuses and, and all of that, it, there's still this element of wanting to show, okay, things can work differently. Yeah, so that our own desire to maybe destabilize certain categories and how we bring that onto the people we studied. 